Welcome everybody. This is the first ever Rebel Scale video. Uh, my name is Jonathan and I thought since Kevin Tanner recently created the Micro Galaxy Squadron Customs and Creations group on Facebook um, and decided to make me an admin. I don't know why. I don't have any experience but uh, happy to be along. So I thought it would be a cool video uh, topic if I went over some of the tips, tricks, tools, whatnot that I use. Now, I'll go ahead and start and say that this isn't a scratch building or painting or kit bashing or airbrushing video. All four of those things could easily be videos on their own. I'm just gonna go over a few of the small tools and, and tricks and stuff that I use. Um, maybe show off a few things like uh, right here I have my ATAT -AT barge. This is a completely original creation of mine. Um, mostly mostly scratch built uh, there's a chassis of a half track in here somewhere uh, the half tracks like that but I flipped it over and flipped it around and you know added a whole bunch of crazy stuff to it so uh, so again mostly mostly scratch built but yeah this is the kind of stuff that I like to do and I, I like to do dioramas as well I like to do scale models that's where I'm coming from um, <clears throat> A lot of people who watch this, if you're a scale model, you're probably going to know most of the tools that I talk about, um, and that's okay. I hope that uh, I hope that I could share some tricks or something that you may not know about. Uh, but starting off on my top, I don't even know how many are here. Top twenty nine and three quarters tools that you need to start scale modeling. I know that sounds like a really catchy title, doesn't it? Um, I'm going to start off with, don't roll, uh, just a hobby knife. I like one that has a cover on it just because that kind of protects me a little bit. Um, I also like one that's not going to roll. Ulfa makes a very nice one that actually has a little indention on one side that keeps it from rolling. But this is one of those things that I absolutely love having. I like also using the back side of the blade for scraping seams and stuff because you can just a random piece but you can you can scrape seams with the back of it just as easily as you can with the front of the blade also um, and I don't know if this one is going to actually show this or not I don't know if we can see it um, it's on there this I really don't know if that's going to show through but that says SS and that does not stand for the German SS of World War II that stands for uh, stainless steel um, if you had trouble with your blades getting dull really quickly or snapping off or for me it was rust it is worth investing in the stainless steel blades which are the more expensive of all of the exacto blades but for me um these blades tend to last a lot longer and i know exacto has like some weird gold zirconium chromagnon chromium cobalt whatever blade um I don't. I think that's just kind of a marketing tactic. I don't think it really does anything. Stainless steel. These things are great. I get them from Excel, I believe. They come in the little black, uh, the black box of death pack. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is a Zona brand. I like the the rubberized grip. Go with go with something that feels good. I mean, you can't go wrong. Well, I mean, you could get a scalpel like one of my friends does and you know, look like an evil surgeon when he's going to town, but, um, yeah, I'm not going to do a scalpel. I'll do a hobby knife. Um, I also have uh, a couple of chisel blades. Um, this one is a standard chisel blade that I think Tamiya makes the tip for, or the blade, actually, and this is just a random handle. Um, this is actually something that I tend to use more for spreading putty. Like, if I got Tamiya putty, I would, you know, get it on there, and I could actually, like, uh, apply it wherever I wanted to and I this is what I tend to use that blade for this is my go-to chisel blade um, which also go to went through my finger at one point right about there and it just went straight up in there um, very clean the blade not my finger um, this was a custom blade actually this was originally like a 45 degree uh, blade and what I did was I wanted to uh, 
I wanted to get like a very thin chisel and that's what this is and I ground it down and honed it out and uh, it's probably my most used chisel blade very very awesome I think uh, what's next I like different kinds of sprue cutters these are flush cut um, I don't use these that often but they are kind of nice to have if you can't get into a certain area they're not that sharp uh, these are my favorite two the super expensive you gotta take a mortgage for them god hands the original official awesome sauce Japanese single blade cutters um, these things can easily break because the tip is the, the actual cutting blade is so incredibly thin right there but when you cut it just it cuts through and, and that's that wasn't the best cut in the world but um, it cuts through really well I mean very smoothly very little white plastic which the, the styrene becomes white when it gets stressed out um, you, that tends to happen if you're one of those guys that likes to use uh, toenail clippers for your sprue cutting. These are Gundam Planet. Um, this is the original Gundam Planet sprue cutters. I like the feel of these better than the God Hands, but I don't. These don't cut as well as the God Hands. They're like a couple steps down. Um, there are several other companies that make these. Dispia. Uh, I know Dispia is one. I think Ming has one, which may be a rebranded uh, Dispia. I really don't know how to say that company's name. Um, but those are sprue cutters. These are just a simple pair of Igan, Gigan, Igan. No, it's not the Godzilla monster. It's Igan. Um, and I've actually dented these a little bit, cutting some steel wire. These are just actual true flush cutters. For wire and they're they're actually like they're actually flush. You know the Zuron, the X U R O N um, cutters really don't cut flush. The blades actually um, they come together like that, which saves the blade, but it also means that it's not actually cutting flush. And so I don't use these for sprues, but I do like these for um, cutting wire. They're really good for that, and they were like eight bucks on Amazon, and I, I I love them. I think they are a beautiful, beautiful thing, um, especially for the price. They're awesome. Let's get those out. Move on to we can do sanding now, I guess. I got too much sanding, um, as you can tell. Neat little package of all sorts of sanding crap. Um, you really don't need all of this. These are. These are God Hand. God Hand makes a lot of uh, sanding stuff now. Um, most of these have a styrene piece that runs through them, which gives them some rigidity. I like these because they're kind of small. I also have some random sanding sticks. Again, these have a piece of styrene that goes through the middle. These are sanding um, pads that are from God Hand as well. These are the buffing pads, and these are more like the sanding pads. I tend to actually use these things the most and these are like I think they're called swizzle sticks is what I usually see them advertised as they are these things cut into thin little strips and sold at exorbitant prices because capitalism um, sometimes they're very poorly cut like this one right here was kind of poorly cut but they work very well I think uh, you can get into some very tight areas with these, and for small work, they're great. For larger stuff, um, I have to hand it to the company Infini, a uh, Korean company. These things are fantastic. Again, you've got the styrene runner in the middle, a good amount of foam. These are these are really just fantastic for large-scale work. I don't use them that often. I actually bought them because another person on YouTube recommended them, and I just had to try them because I'm that kind of person. Um, and then 
the last thing that I have is, we'll get to the giant eraser in a minute. This is for a tool, but I tend to use this just as its own more than the tool. And it's got a, a semi-coarse side that may be a 400 grit and then probably like an 800 grit on this side. And this is actually sandpaper. When this wears down completely, I'll peel it off, sand that smooth, and glue a new piece of sandpaper to it. Uh, and I really love just because it's that solid core, it's solid wood right there. I can sand something very smooth, very quickly. Um, and if you're wondering what this is, this is a drafting eraser. And this is what I use to clean uh, sanding sticks and stuff because you can go back and forth a few times and completely get rid of any just about anything that you get in there. I mean eventually yeah you'll have to replace the sandpaper but um, it certainly helps get all the gunk out because if you've ever sanded styrene then you know that it, it tends to collect a little bit. It tends to be a little bit annoying in that regard. So we'll move that out of the way back to where it lives well over on my table. Uh, we'll move to some tweezers. These are Tamiya craft tool tweezers. I think they're about 20 bucks. That's expensive for a pair of tweezers, I know. Um, but once I tried these the first time, they, they just feel so solid. Uh, I love them. But you can get a cheap pair of tweezers and do just about the same thing. These are Sunodo, Sunodo, Sun something, I don't know. Um, it's an Amazon, well they're sold on Amazon, they're sold in other places, but it's like T-S-U-N-O-D-A-D-O, -D -D I think. Um, these are photo etch bending pliers. They also make um, a Sunoda. I think that says Sunoda. Um, they also make these, which are longer nosed. These are shorter nose. These things are just fantastic for not only for bending photo etch, which I tend to do with pliers more than anything, but they, they work great for just holding parts and, and you know pressing something in there where you need just a little bit extra force. And they're really, really comfortable in the hand. They're high quality Japanese tools, very nice to, to work with. Um, next up, if you do not have one, then you really need to get um, a pin vise and this is a Zona pin vise that has different collets um, these are the two medium sized collets and then the largest and the smallest are this on the same piece which is right here you've got the smallest one which goes down to basically nothing and it goes up to about an eighth of an inch I think um, because it can fit this is the old Dremel uh, release of bits, and it goes all the way from 1 32nd to 1 8th. Uh, but this thing can go down to, you know, a, a 0.1 millimeter uh, piece of hair, and it can, it can. I mean, it, it gets, it gets very tiny. Um, this is my drill bit set that has all the different drill bits on it. This is in metric because I think that's a better system. But I have my wonderful handy dandy conversion because inches, millimeters, wire gauges, uh, for some reason everybody wants to do like wire gauges on drill bits and I don't quite understand that but yeah, whatever. Also I go with these because I know that a lot of people like the ones that have like the giant, um, the giant shank and then they have like the plastic collar around it, um, you know, ribbed for her pleasure kind of thing. I don't care for those because if I drop this, I could I could drop this from my table right now. I could even like and I I'm trying to bend the tip. What the heck? I'll do it. I'll do it. I broke it. But it's still usable. You do that with one of those like weird collar drill bits and you're not going to be able to use it anymore. It's it's going to be useless. It's going to snap at the weakest point, which is probably going to be on the drill part, and you're, you're going to be screwed. The important thing with a pin vise that it took me a long time to learn 
you need some kind of needle or little prickly pin thing to start the hole. So if I was trying to drill a hole into, let me get that centered. If I was trying to drill a hole right here, take this and punch right where you want the hole to be. Now you've got the hole started. Now from there you can, um, and I don't know if that is really showing through or not, but maybe it is. I hope it is. Um, now you can actually start drilling that out because pen vices, they, you, you spin them so slowly they tend to walk a little bit and because of that you're never going to get like a perfectly straight hole if you're having to start the hole at the same time. It just it doesn't work that well. I put my handy dandy pliers back that I broke a drill bit with. Uh, what's next? More for scratch building, but I like to have some saws available. Um, this is a Zona 64 teeth per inch, I think, something like that. It is the smallest kerf saw, and if you're wondering what the kerf is, it is the distance between the teeth on a saw. So if the teeth are like that, then the distance is between those two teeth. Uh, most of the Zona saws uh, are just straight up and down teeth. They don't really jag, they, do, they don't really bow out too much, just slightly. Um, this one's fantastic. This one is larger, more teeth, or fewer teeth per inch, so it's a deeper cut, quicker cut, rougher cut. Uh, and I use this with a tool that I have that is for cutting um, tubing. And then this is something that I made, which is just an Excel handle with a saw that I cut out of one of these things. I actually cut two of these, one that works on the pull cut and one that works on a push cut. And because of this, I can cut through something where there's stuff that's around the edge and I'm not going to hit it. Whereas with this, this little lip hits stuff if I'm trying to cut something really, really deep. Uh, like my finger. And, you know, I don't want to damage the surroundings of my finger, so, you know, I use this thing. Uh, you don't really need all of that, but it is kind of nice to have a saw blade around. Especially if you're trying to cut a wing off or something. That just really helps. Next thing, uh, your alcohol addiction may come in handy because beer bottle caps are one of the greatest things at holding super glue. And for what I like to do, I like to get, and I'll show you both the super glues that I use. This is VMS Flexi super glue for dioramas that actually takes a little bit of while to bond and it gives you some time to arrange it. It also has a built-in, you probably can't see it, but there's a built-in metal needle in the tip right there. And that actually works very well at keeping it unclogged. And then this is super thin super glue, which you can put a drop down there. And then I'll use something called a glue looper or uh, this is a flexifile glue applicator. So you've got the little little tippy tip right there, or this little tippy tip thing right there. It wicks it up. You put it on. You put it on something like your finger, and it spreads it out. This is one of the easiest ways to apply super glue. And then when this thing gets gummed up. You burn it and it burns right off. So that's why I had the lighter. I'm not actually a smoker. I'm not that crazy. Uh, you have to have a cover because this thing is a photo etch piece and it's very fragile. But it's a fantastic tool to have. Um, and it only really works with the extra thin super glue. And that happens to be what I'm using right there. So there's that. Next thing on the agenda is um, putties because you're gonna have to putty something in at one point this is my preferred putty but it also stinks to high heaven um, it is a kind of a lacquer type putty because you can thin it with lacquer thinner it dries very hard, it's sandable, it's not going to wash away with water. Very good. 
this is very similar to that and then this is an acrylic putty that doesn't smell that bad but it doesn't hold quite as well because it's it's an acrylic base um this is an epoxy putty i like this over milliput milliput dries a little bit faster this stuff takes a little bit longer um this is great for filling in larger gaps, larger seams. It dries rock hard. It is sandable, carvable. It's a little expensive though. And it takes about 24 hours to really set up. And of course, if you haven't used JB Weld, then I don't know what you're doing with your life. I filled in the back of this pin vise with JB Weld so that when I'm holding it and using it, it's not digging the hell out of my hand. So. Lastly, I think I'll hit on some glues, just really quick, of the, the glues that I prefer. Uh, in terms of thickness, there you go. This is an acrylic PVA glue, kind of like your white craft glue, but a lot stronger. It's a little bit thinner. This stuff is designed for gluing photo etch, but I actually find that it works great with clear parts as well, because it's not going to... Um, it's not going to fog them up like uh, super glue will do. It's got a great applicator. And this guy is, I want to say he's out of Florida. I can't remember. But you order it directly from the person. Like you email him um, on his website and he'll give you an invoice. And then your Tamiya cements, these are for just styrene. Quick setting, which is... Um, basically a uh, nail polish remover practically it dries really really quick the go-to to me extra thin cement which is also the same as to me as airbrush cleaner um, this may be a little bit denser but the chemicals that they use are the same so you can refill this with to me as airbrush cleaner if you really want to but I'd buy at least one of these because you know you got to have that brush you gotta have that tip just the tip mind. Uh, and then to me is typical cement, which is thicker, um, takes, oh, something fell off there. Ugh. That's not good. Okay, days without incident, zero. Whew, that's stinky. Um, this dries slower, dries harder. This dries faster, but not as hard. And then this is in the middle. These two are meant to work. And some people don't actually talk about this, but these two are meant to work by holding, I'll get, you're probably not gonna be able to see this, but by holding the pieces together, and then wicking it in between. And then that glues it. Now, the cement hasn't dried yet, so you could still pull it apart, but these are not designed to apply to a piece and then put the other piece on. They're designed to use capillary action. And this, you can put onto a piece and then put another piece on top of it. So, gosh, we're past 20 minutes now. I think that's about all the basic tools that I use. I have Band-Aids and... Uh, um, some vices and things to hold other things up. I have a Dremel. I have, um, if you don't have self-locking pliers, you really need to get some. These are the greatest ways to paint things in the world. Um, and there's all kinds. You can also get some that are, these I coated with a uh, shrink tube. And so they're not going to mar the surface of something, but you really need to get some of those. They're great for all sorts of projects. But anyway, that's that's about it. I'm I'll go into scratch building on another video. I'll go into using a Dremel. I'll do an airbrushing. I'll probably a few airbrushing videos. I can do some um, weathering type videos. How I approach it. Uh, everybody's got their different method. Um, but right now, I'll show you what I'm working on. Um, the ATST from Micro Galaxy Squadron. I'm trying to make it look as close to the Bandai model as I can. 
uh, which includes adding in new pipes, adding the little tensioners made out of brass, fixing the toes to add the little clippy clippy thingies, I don't know what you call them. The toenails, um, redoing the entire command pod with new windows, the concussion grenade launcher, better looking side blasters, better looking blasters, piping underneath, and then the roof with the railing, which is completely made out of brass wire, and last but not least is the opening hatch, which I'm very, very proud of. So, anyway, that's what I've got going on. Guys, this is my first video, so please, please, please leave some comments. Let me know what you think. I was going to say be nice, but I don't feel like asking to be nice. Just be honest. Uh, let me know what I can do differently. Let me know what you want to see. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. That's, uh, well, that's 26 minutes. I guess I talked longer than I thought I did. Anyway, congratulations if you made it all the way through. Cheers.